Okay, so this is from 8.3.36. So 8.3 was when we talked about population. I'm sorry, confidence interval for uh, population mean. So, okay, so let's see. Uh, when a survey asks about how many hours per week do you spend sending and answering email? Hmm. The summary statistics were shown in the graphing calculator screenshot, complete parts A through C below. So they already got something for us, looks like. Click uh, the icon to view graphing calculator screenshot. Oh, very nice. They got everything for us already. So because they're capturing the, well, what the, the population mean, the true population mean of the number of hours per week people spend on answering and sending emails, um, this is a t interval. They had to use t distribution to um, find this interval because they don't know the population standard deviation. But anyways, so they got us this interval, awesome, and they got us the sample mean. And you know how they created this t interval, right? They got this sample mean. They multiply, but what's the, okay? The the sample size is one thousand thirty. So um. And they got standard deviation of the sample. So, all right. So, what do they want? They got everything. Uh, what is a margin of error at ninety five percent, ninety percent confidence level for the point estimate of the mean of number of store, scores? Oh, okay. It's just a calculator away. Now, notice they want you to find the margin of error, right? They gave you an interval already. Now, they created this interval using that margin of error, right? From point estimate, they added a margin of error, and they subtracted a margin of error to go up to the upper bound and go down to the lower bound. So here's the margin of error, okay? Upper bound is 7.57. .57. Subtract the point estimate, and what is the best estimate to capture the population mean, the sample mean? So subtract that by 9.57. Sorry, sorry, 6.91. Ta-da! Here is your margin of error, 0.66. So this is the number they had to subtract to go down to the lower bound. So if you want to check, check that, let's do that. So 0.66 is the margin of error. So starting from 6.91, the point estimate, subtract 0.66, we better see the lower, uh, lower interval, lower bound, 6.25. So that's it. That's why the margin of error is simply 0.66. And that's what it is. All right. Interpret the confidence interval and 90% confidence level. Uh, choose the correct answer below. So we want some one of the sentences to say we are 95%, I'm sorry, 90% confident that the true population mean of um, how, how many hours people spend on answering email and sending emails per week can be captured within this interval. So there is 90% confidence that the population mean amount of People spending an answer is between six point. That sounds like it. Okay, I'm gonna click on this, but let me keep reading to see if anything else sounds better. The population hours of sending an email, uh, receiving email is ninety percent likely. No, that's just using the point estimate. That's not even using the point, uh, the confidence interval. Uh, approximately ninety percent of the con uh, population spends between. No, that's not what confidence intervals are saying. We're talking about hey, the average may be captured in this interval. Uh, and 90 percent confidence. That's that's what the confidence interval is trying to say. We are we are just only ninety percent confidence. We're not saying ninety percent of the population spends that much. Um, the population mean hours of sending exactly ninety percent is never not exactly all right. So that's it. A is the best answer. You just have to know what confidence interval means. Uh, uh, distribution of hours spent is right skewed. Oh, okay. That means a lot of people are just spending a good, good amount. The minimum of zero hour. No, 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 not that way. Like people like me is pulling the average to the to the right end. Okay, so distribution of hour is right skewed. So some people don't even have emails, right? So the minimum of zero hour is about point zero five standard deviation below the mean. But the largest value of these scores higher, larger than twelve. That's right. Some people just live on computers. Um, is this concern for the validity of the confidence interval? 
I mean, the population is not normally distributed. It is right skewed, they're saying. So what takes care of that? Can we still use normal distribution too? Uh, or, yeah, in this case, what, T? We use T distribution, right? Because T distribution is symmetric. It's not right skewed, so can we still use it? And the answer is going to be yes. Why? What was the sample size? Remember that sample size? I was like, whoa, 1030. That's a big sample size. And by, and by central limit theorem, when you have a big sample size, sampling distribution of sample means are going to be, you know, uh, roughly symmet well, symmetrical or normal. And that looks like a T distribution, so we should be able to use it. Yes, because the data includes zero, not, not, not you. Um, yes, ha let's look at this one. Because Q data will, no, 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 what were they asking? Were they asking, is this a concern? Oh, it's not a concern. We got a big pain sample size already, so it doesn't bother me. So I want to go with no. Because the sample size is very large, so the central limit theorem applies. There you go. That's what we want. Check answer. That's what we do.